Afternoon. Don't you hate it when you hit go live and then realise that you don't have your glass of water with you? Sad times. So um, I guess I'm going to have to do this waterless. Um, tough. <laughs> First world problems. Anyway, <laughs> hello. Um, nice to be here. Uh, I haven't been live on this page for a couple of weeks and so I thought it was high time that I came and said hello and chatted to you. Um, about growing your email list. Um, so one of the most common challenges that um, I'm asked about is how to grow your email list. And um, so I thought I would come and share um, not one, not two, not three, but 30 different ideas um, for you um, around different lead magnets um, that you can um, create um, to grow your email list faster. But let me start with the basics first. Um, first of all, let me introduce myself. So if you are new around these parts, my name is Colette Boomhead. I am a business coach and I work with mums who have service-based businesses. So basically anyone who works with clients. And I help them to um, get more visible, um, to get more leads and to make more sales. In a nutshell. Um, and I do that by focusing on helping people get clearer on their messaging, helping people to create um, simple marketing strategies that don't feel overwhelming. Um, I love working with mums because as a mum myself, I really kind of get the challenges. And one of the biggest challenges that mums are facing when they're growing their business is avoiding that sense of overwhelm, not overcomplicating things and not um, running out of time because let's face it, we're pretty busy. Um, so that's what I help with and then I help with those all important sales skills um, so that we can actually get more clients. So that's me and as I say today I'm going to chat to you about email marketing, about how to build your email list and give you 30 ideas um, for lead magnets that you can use um, to grow your list. Um, so um, first of all, let me quickly explain, um, in case you're wondering what on earth I'm talking about when I say lead magnet. Um, a lead magnet is simply the term um, that we use to describe um, something that you offer to people in exchange for their email address. So gone are the days where you can simply throw up a kind of subscribe here box on your website and hope to build your list that way. You, sure, you may get the odd random person subscribing, um, but if you really want to, grow your list, um, you need to offer more. People need to be given some kind of incentive before they're going to hand over their um, email address because let's face it, we're all constantly battling with an overcrowded um, inbox and so we tend to give away our email address fairly carefully, some more carefully than others. So um, in order to grow your list, you need to come up with something to incentivize your ideal clients. And um, the most common examples that we see are things like um, free templates, checklists, eBooks, um, and that kind of thing. Um, but I wanted to come and give you just a whole ton of ideas so that if this is something that you're struggling with, um, it's gonna give you a ton of inspiration and, and may give you a little bit of a light bulb moment so that you can go and create something amazing for your audience. So I'm gonna start off with a caveat. Every single one of these ideas um, can work, can absolutely help to grow your email list, but um, you need to create it with your ideal clients in mind. It sounds pretty obvious, but it's absolutely worth saying because it can be, sometimes we do forget this. Um, the lead magnets that work the best are the ones which are created with your ideal clients in mind, the ones which give your ideal clients a quick win um, or based on something that they're currently struggling with. So in order to really create an effective lead magnet, you need to know who your ideal clients are and you need to understand, understand the kind of frustrations, challenges, um, questions, etc., that they um, are most commonly dealing with. And when you know that, then you can create something that's going to be irresistible for them. So with that in mind, let me take you through my 30 ideas. So idea number one is a checklist. Um, so a checklist is super simple. And this is a great lead magnet because it's nice and simple for you to make. 
Um, I have made checklists. I've got a few checklists that I use as lead magnets in my own business. Um, I've got a checklist, a blog post checklist, which basically takes people through a list of um, things to remember to do or check when they when you're creating a blog post. Um, I've, I've even got a lead magnet checklist, um, which takes people through the same for when they're creating a lead magnet. And um, the, the brilliant thing, thing about a checklist is that, as I say, it's super simple for you to make. I tend to do all mine in Canva. Um, so it doesn't take too much time. It's not going to take you months to get ready. Um, but it's a really, really handy tool. It's a really, really handy resource for your ideal clients. Um, checklists give people exactly what you want your lead magnet to give them, which is a quick win. Um, so think of a common challenge um, that your ideal clients have and build a checklist around it. Um, so um, that is idea number one. Idea number two is a template. Um, who doesn't love a good template? Um, and there are so many different, obviously depending on your industry, depending on your niche, um, there will be so many different options for this. But again, not too tricky for you to create. It's not going to take hours or weeks and weeks and weeks to create a handy little template. But it gives your ideal clients a quick win. It's a really, really handy resource. So again, in my kind of business, I might create a template. Uh, in fact, I have um, created templates for um, a welcome series for emails. Um, so, you know, um, a, a template that people can use to create um, a welcome series. You might create, um, let me try to think of another example. Uh, so a web designer might create a template um, for the perfect home page or about page or something like that. So have a think about what kind of template that you could use. The kind of templates I'm always looking on, uh, on the lookout for, 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 for me, are things like accounting templates or um, like contract or terms and condition templates. They're the kind of things I'm always on the lookout for. So have a think about who your ideal clients are and what kind of templates they might be looking for because that can be a really, really irresistible lead magnet if you get it right. Idea number three is a swipe file. Um, so um, if you're not sure what a swipe file is, um, it's basically um, a collection of, of files of something that your ideal clients can use. So I might send a swipe file of ad copy or email copy or um, that kind of thing. So it's basically um, giving people a whole collection of stuff that they can use for their for them you know to solve a problem of their own. Am I explaining this right? I hope I am. <laughs> but again, swipe files can be really, really handy and definitely irresistible if you get it right for your ideal client and base it around something that they're really looking for and that they really need. Idea number four is an ebook. So I mentioned this at the start. It's a um, common, commonly used lead magnet, and a reason, and there's a reason for it. Um, and that's because it's you know it's reasonably simple to create. It's a, it's not as simple as others. Um, and I would get, add another caveat with this one, um, that sometimes um, it, it, it can be overcomplicated. Generally speaking with a lead magnet, because it's something that people are downloading for free, um, you need to keep it as quick and simple to use and get the benefit from as possible. Because when we haven't paid for something, we're not that committed to, to actually using it. Um, it's a weird thing, but it's absolutely true. When you pay for something, you, because you've kind of put skin in the game, you've paid money out for it, you're committed to actually doing it. You're committed to um, getting the most of it from it. But when you haven't paid for something, there isn't that commitment there because you really haven't lost anything. Um, you might kind of in the spur of the moment go, oh, that sounds great. And let's face it, how many of us have done that? I know I have signed up for freebies and then, you know, never actually done anything with them at all. Um, and that's the danger with a freebie. What you really want from your freebie is not just for people to sign up for it, but you actually want them to get a benefit from it because it's when they get that benefit that they remember you and they're more likely to then open your emails in the future. So you want to be creating something that is really valuable, not just something that tempts people to sign up, but something that really does give them some kind of results um, and something that's going to keep you front of mind. And so that's why sometimes an ebook can be a tricky one, because although on the, on the kind of 
the surface, it sounds amazing. It's like, wow, a whole book. I'm giving away a whole book for free. This is so valuable. Um, so it can be quite tempting for people to sign up to, but oftentimes people won't then actually go and use it because people are looking for a quick win and going through a book um, can, can, you know, can be a bit of effort. Um, and so not everyone will then use it and then get the results. So it's about getting the balance right. So if you are going to create an ebook, keep it concise, keep it really easy to work through. Don't make it too kind of big blocks of text or anything like that. Make it really easy to consume and make sure that you're focusing that ebook on giving people quick wins and tons of value. So that's the ebook. What else have we got? That was number four. So number five, this is one of my favorites and this always works really, really well. And that's a challenge. I love a good challenge. And they're really, really big right now, aren't they? Every, everywhere you look, there's, there's new challenges um, being promoted. Um, we all love a challenge, don't we? So the beauty of a challenge is that not only does it build your email list, um, but also it's a way of actually making money. You, you, a challenge is used to generate leads, but also to generate sales. Um, so it's, it's a really good one. It's sort of two for the price of one. So if you've never run a challenge, it's great fun, and I highly recommend it. Um, give it a go. Um, so you can create a challenge. Again, I would focus on giving people quick wins. One of the biggest mistakes that I see people make when they run challenges, pardon me, is overcomplicating it and overwhelming people. And what happens then is people fall behind, they get discouraged and they don't finish the challenge. Um, and then by not finishing, finishing the challenge, of course, they're not getting the results um, that you want them to get. Um, and that you've kind of promoted that they'll get when you've promoted the challenge. Um, and so rather than having an amazing experience, they end up having a kind of meh experience and, you know, forget you and don't buy from you, which is not what you want. So when you're running a challenge, keep in mind not to overcomplicate things. Have a clear result that you are um, telling people that you know that they're going to um, be getting if they take this challenge be really really specific around what your challenge is going to help people achieve and then keep it simple focus on quick wins um, and yeah watch your email list grow and hopefully your client list too what's next number six live training um, so also known as a webinar um, a live training um, is another great way to grow your list and also um, another one where it's kind of um, two wins for the price of one because you can also use your webinar webinar live training um, to get sales. So um, most of us have attended some kind of webinar or live training at some point but in case you haven't and you're not sure what I'm talking about essentially all it is is you sign up for um, like a live training or workshop, much like this, um, uh, you will usually be sent a link where you can join it. Often it's, it's held on something like Zoom um, and you will attend the training and then at the end of the training, usually the person who's running it will have some kind of promotion, something that they want to sell um, off the back of the training. But if you're going to do it well, what you want to focus on is really, really giving tons of value in that training um, and making sure that, again, you're giving people value, you're giving people quick wins um, and you're making it worth their while because our time is super, super valuable. So when you're asking people to give you time, you need to make sure that you're making it worth their while because there's nothing that people find more annoying than kind of signing up for something, giving their time for it and then not getting back what they thought they would. So make sure when you're when you're promoting something like this that you're going to make it as valuable as possible for people so that they don't regret um, giving you their time, but in fact, you know, are grateful that they have. Um, so that is the live training or webinar. What else have we got? So that was number six. We also have research. Now this um, is one that I don't see used very often, but when it's done well, um, can be a really, really great lead magnet. So think about your industry, your niche. And um, if you can do things like case studies um, or research, um, then actually, not only does that act as a really great lead magnet, but it sets you up as a kind of, you know, really credible source. It sets you up as a thought leader in your area. Um, so that can go really well as well. Um, and again, the, the right kind of research or case studies can be really valuable and really um, attractive to your ideal clients. 
So that's number seven. Then we've got number eight, the good old fashioned discount. Um, so this is this tends to be seen, you, you see this more often with kind of physical products. Um, so, um, you know, sign up to get the voucher code for 30% off or um, that kind of thing. Um, I think restaurants and, and um, places like that use it very well. You'll quite often get sign up to our email list and get a, you know, a voucher for £10 off your next visit, that kind of stuff. But there's nothing stopping you using it if you're a service-based business too. Um, uh, one thing, again, I seem to be talking a lot, having a lot of caveats um, in this live, but one thing to just bear in mind is if you use discounts too often, you start to kind of teach your audience to expect them. And so they're no longer then prepared um, to pay the full price. So use discounts with caution. Um, I tend to avoid them for the most part, um, but done well um, or done as a one-off, um, they can work really well too. Okay, number nine, video training. So more and more people are watching video now. Um, so much like the live training, a video training just works as you know, giving people um, some value in the form of some training or a workshop, but pre-recording it. So you can kind of, um, you know, do the work once, but then use it um, on an ongoing basis. So it's um, much less effort for you, um, but still the same value, um, although perhaps not quite the same experience as attending live um, for your audience. Okay, number 10, we're a third of the way through. Um, audio file. Um, so this is another one I don't see used very often. Um, podcasts are huge right now. Um, and, you know, um, so many people are listening to podcasts. Um, there's a real opportunity actually to just be a bit different, I think, um, and create some kind of audio file. Again, it could be trainings, it could be um, affirmations, it could be meditations, it could be music um, of some sort. Um, so have a think that what could work well for your audience, what would be suitable. Um, but something like an audio file um, could make a really kind of fun and creative um, lead magnet. Okay, now we're on number 11. So number 11, I've got a trial or a taster. Um, so um, people don't often think of this as a lead magnet, but it is. So say, for example, you have a particular service, you could op op um, offer people the first one free, for example, and people sign up to get their first free um, whatever it is that you offer. Um, so that can work really well. When I was in corporate um, and I worked... Um, on a membership that had around a million members <laughs> and we offered a 30-day free trial and it was a great way to get people in to get them on our email list and to convert them to clients because pe once people have had a taster you know if you've got a good service um, there's a good chance they're going to want to hang around and pay for it as well okay my next one is a competition so you'll see competitions all over the place on social media. There's always competitions for this, that and the other. And that's because, again, they work really, really well. They're fun. Um, it's turning like so there's a marketing term called uh, gamification, which is essentially um, using kind of games um, or making things seem like games in order to um, market um, your products or services. And that's kind of, you know, running a competition is a very basic version of gamification. Um, it's kind of turning um, marketing into something fun. Um, so my my usual caveat, everything comes with a caveat apparently, um, is to make sure that when you are running a competition that you make it relevant to your service. Um, and when I say that, make your prize relevant to your service because what you don't want to do is get people signing up or doing the competition um, just for the prize if they're not your ideal clients. So say, for example, as a business coach, I ran a competition. If I made the prize to my competition, uh, I don't know, an Xbox, um, then I'm going to get tons of gamers and people who want an Xbox signing up for my competition. But they're not necessarily my ideal clients. They're not necessarily mums for service-based businesses. So actually, all I'm doing is wasting my money on giving away an Xbox to a load of people who are never going to be clients. So make sure when you are, if you're going to use a competition, which can absolutely work really well, um, that you are keeping it super duper relevant to your ideal clients so that you're only going to get them participating. 
what are we on next? We are on number 13, a quiz. Um, so again, more gamification. Everyone loves a good quiz, right? And again, you see quizzes all over the place on social media and no one can resist a good quiz. I have used a quiz um, to great effect in my own business. So I created a biz, a, a biz, <laughs> a quiz, um, which basically was around finding out um, where you are on your business journey and uh, I think there's about five questions and then at the end it kind of tells you what stage you're at and it gives you next steps and what you should be focusing on for your particular stage and people love this people we all love taking a quiz especially where if it's a quiz where we can learn more about ourselves you know you've seen all the you know which Harry Potter character are you and all this kind of stuff um, because we all love that stuff so if you can find something that fits your own business and again make it relevant to your business because if you're just doing a random quiz that's nothing to do with your business you'll just get all sorts of random people taking it who aren't your ideal clients so make sure it's relevant to your business but if you can come up with something then it's a fantastic lead magnet because people really cannot resist <laughs> taking a good quiz all right so we are now on to number 14 so number 14 is a tool or an app so anything that makes your ideal clients' lives easier or more convenient. Now, obviously, with something like a tool or an app, potentially, um, this is going to be um, more um, effort, potential cost um, to create. That being said, if you come up with something that is truly um, useful and irresistible for your ideal clients, it may well be worth it. Um, so something to consider. Um, you'll see a lot of, of uh, you know, apps um, that are free, and the reason that is it is that they, it then kind of gets you into a company's kind of um, audience, so that then they can start selling you their paid products, and that's exactly um, what um, the beauty of a lead magnet is. Okay, what's next? So we've got then a calculator. So this will depend on your niche. Um, it may not be appropriate, but in certain niches, this kind of thing can work brilliantly. So one of when I was doing um, social media management, I had a client who was a mortgage advisor um, and mortgage calculators. Um, and, and in fact, any kind of financial calculators, budget calculators and tax calculators are always super, super popular because they're such a useful resource. So thinking about, again, who your ideal clients are and whether there's something like that that might be appropriate for them. Um, and if so, absolutely see if you can come up with something for them because they are such a great way to attract your ideal clients. Right, next one, planner. Um, so again, I don't know if you're seeing a theme here, but anything that is going to help keep make your ideal clients' lives more um, convenient or make their lives easier is always going to make a really, really good lead magnet. You're looking for quick wins, you're looking for convenience, you're looking for you know making things easier. Anything that ticks any of those boxes is probably going to be a really attractive lead magnet for your ideal clients, as long as it's related to something um, you know, in your niche, um, and that is going to be something that your ideal clients want or need. So for me, um, I've used um, marketing planners, social media planners um, for um, so for lead magnets, and both both of those worked really well. Okay, next printables. Who can resist a good printable? Um, so have a think about whether there's anything in your niche or for your industry um, that would make a good printable. Um, the, again, it just goes back to something that's super handy, convenient, it could just be fun, um, that your ideal clients won't be able to resist. All right, we are, we're racing through these now. We're on number, number 18. So number 18 is an infographic. So this is kind of almost like the research one that I mentioned earlier, but this is where um, you're giving people um, kind of stats, results, information, um, anything that they're going to find useful or interesting or entertaining um, in the form of an infographic. Um, there's something just visually captivating about an infographic and a lot of people prefer to consume information that way rather than reading um, a whole load of text or figures or stats or anything like that. 
Okay, number 19, a mini course. Um, so it's just training again, but in a different form. Um, so it's really like not, over, you know, not trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, having a think about, you know, is there something, in, is there like how to uh, training that your ideal clients need? And if so, can you package it in a mini course? So um, when I um, was um, a business coach for businesses who were just starting out, I created a five day, in fact it might have been a seven day, um, mini course around just the business foundation. So we covered, you know, um, identifying your ideal clients, getting clear on your niche, setting up your social media accounts, um, creating a, um, a business plan, and all of the kind of key foundations that you need when you're starting a business and when you're getting set up. Um, and I put that all together in a seven day mini course that went out day by day for seven days um, via email. And it was super duper popular um, and packed full of value. Okay, number 20, a cheat sheet. Um, I mean, just the name sounds pretty irresistible, doesn't it? <laughs> The chance to cheat. <laughs> um, so a cheat sheet. Um, so this is just another way to give your ideal clients a quick win, something to make their lives easier, something to make their lives more convenient. So I have cheat sheets um, for, what have I got a cheat sheets for? Um, social media, so giving people like pre-planned social media posts. Um, I have um, a welcome series cheat sheet. Um, giving people like the um, framework to create their own welcome series. Um, so basically anything that just gives people, that makes their lives easier. So a common, um, you know, thing that they want to do and don't know how to or um, question or challenge, anything that like that that you can create a cheat sheet to help them with um, is going to be always a popular lead magnet. Okay, what about a free consultation? Again, this isn't one that we necessarily associate with being a lead magnet. So you see free consultations being used all the time. Um, I use them in my own business. Um, weirdly, I don't actually use them as a lead magnet. Um, I don't even take people's emails, email addresses when I when I do um, free consultations, but you absolutely could. Um, and it could make a great um, lead magnet. And again, this is another one that works really well both to generate leads, um, but also to make sales because when you're giving people a free consultation and they're getting a taste of what it's like to work with you, um, then they're much, much more likely to then go on and buy from you. What's next? 22, a free quote. Um, so um, this one, again, will depend on what your industry, what your niche is, um, but could work really well. Um, if you are um, providing a service where perhaps you have to go out and, you know, um, assess something before you can kind of price what the work that you're going to be doing, um, you know, perhaps you want to create a proposal for people, then you can take their email address um, in order to send them that quote, that proposal. Um, and as long as you're being clear that what you're also doing is adding them to your email list because of GDPR, um, then you can also use it to build your email list and generate leads. We're getting through them now. We're getting through them now. I feel like we've done well. <laughs> um, okay, number 23, um, prompts and inspiration. So um, lead magnets don't always have to be... Um, training, they don't always have to be like how to's or anything like that. A lead magnet can be something that just improves someone's life in some way um, and kind of adds value to their lives in a different way. So it doesn't all have to be around teaching people how to do things or make or you know convenience, all of this kind of stuff. It can just be um adding value and, and making your life a bit a bit nicer and a bit better. And so um there was a great one, I can't remember what it was, but I signed up two years ago. Um, I don't get it anymore, but it used to just be an email that came through every day um, with a um, like a really positive inspirational quote. Um, and it was just a really nice thing to, you know, to kind of get every day and just to kind of start the day off nicely. Um, and that's all it needs to be. And there's tons of stuff like that. So if that's something that you think your ideal clients would enjoy, um, then use that as your lead magnet. Okay, we are now on number 24. So number 24 um, are um, event or kind of live event um, or online event tickets. So you can use events 
um, to build your email list. Um, so um, this can either be through kind of free events where people just sign up to register um, or paid events and people sign up to register and then are on your email list for future events. So either way, um, it works really well to build your email list. Okay, number 25, resource library. So this is a fun one. Um, so if like me, you have um, over the years created many, many different lead magnets, um, then why not bundle them all up and offer them as one big resource library for your ideal clients? Um, because that can make it even more irresistible. Um, my usual caveat, um, I haven't had a caveat for a while, so it's about time I had another one, um, is that um, weirdly, in some cases, it might have the opposite effect. So um, there is some kind of a science based research that's happened, which basically says that when us humans are faced with too many decisions to make in one go, what happens is we just kind of close down and don't make any decisions. And so for that reason, um, for example, when you're creating something like a, um, a sales page or a landing page, um, you tend to avoid putting too many calls to action. You tend to just have one make, one call to action because if there are more than if there's more than one call to action, what happens is people don't choose either because they're like, oh, I don't know, oh, I don't know, and then they just don't choose either. And the same is true in this instance too. So while you may attract more people because you're giving them more choice and more value, you may also put people off because they're like, ah, oh, too much stuff. Um, so. Just my my uh, my little caveat there, my little word of warning. Okay, so number twenty six, Facebook groups. So um, your Facebook group um, can be used um, in a few ways to grow your email list. So I'm talking in this instance about using your group as a lead magnet. So you can literally um, get people to sign up in order to get access to your group. So um, this has um, a couple of benefits. So one, it grows your email list, and two, um, it gives your group more of a kind of VIP exclusive feel. So like you have to actually sign up to get access to it, to be able to join. Um, so that can work really well. Um, also, you can use your group itself to grow your list just by asking people in your joining questions for your group um, if they want to join your list. So if you go to my group, which is Fully Booked Mums, um, and you try to join that group, you will see I have three joining questions. And one of those questions asks you if you would like to get 31 days of social media prompts and says, if you do, um, leave your email address and I will send them out to you. And that is a great way to build your email list. Okay, we are nearing the end now. We're nearing the end. Um, Pinterest boards, number 27, Pinterest boards. So um, if you've ever tried to join a group Pinterest board, you will know that you need to contact the group owner. Um, and they will generally say, um, you know, email me here. Um, and tell me, you know, you might have to sh tell them who you are and why you want to join. And um, they'll usually also ask you to join, uh, to follow their other Pinterest boards. But what you could do is say, you know, if you want to join this group board, um, you know, sign up for my email list and get people to subscribe to, to get access to join your group board. So that's another um, not commonly used one, um, but one that could work really well, especially if it's a really active and big group board, because people will really want to join it. Okay, number 28, a free membership. So if you have a paid membership, then this can be a really, really good way to grow your list. And that is to create a free version of it. So it could either be, well, we've already talked about free trials. So it could either be in the form of a free trial. So sign up, get seven, 10, 30, however long days for free. Um, or you could actually have a free version of the membership, which doesn't have all the bells and whistles that your paid version does. So people come in for free, kind of low commitment. You get their email address. They get to kind of sample a bit of what you have to offer. 
um, and you get to nurture them by sending them amazing emails um, and then you can kind of then upsell them into the paid version. So that can be a really, really great tactic, especially if you have a membership. Oops. Okay, number 29, a waiting list or early bird discount. So if you are planning to launch something, um, whether it be a course or a membership or a coaching program or whatever it is, um, then actually creating a waiting list for that can not only be a fantastic way to grow your list, but also to build a bit of buzz and a bit of excitement around your launch. So if you haven't already done that and you're planning your launch, get your waiting list started, get it out there, um, because then you can be building a warm audience before you even go into your launch. Okay, the very last one is your actual newsletter. Um, so your actual newsletter, at the end of the day, the point of getting people on your email list is so that you can send them tons of value and really nurture them and build their trust and build that relationship with them through your emails. So um, use that as a lead magnet. Tell people about what they can expect when they sign up. Tell people about the value that you're going to send to them each week in your newsletter and use that um, to add people to your list. So those are all 30 of my ideas. I hope you had some little gems there um, and got some inspiration for your own email list. Um, do let me know if you did. Let me know if you plan on using any of them. Let me know if you already are using any of them um, and how successful they are for you. And I shall be back here next week to chat to you about something else exciting that I haven't decided yet um, to help you grow your business and get more clients. Have a wonderful week. And if you haven't already liked the page, go do that now, please. Um, and I shall see you again soon. Take care.